What's up guys, welcome to O'Neill Code. Today we're going to be talking about the coin change problem and I'm going to be giving you a dynamic solution to solve it. You'll be getting a visual example of what dynamic programming is and a Java code walkthrough at the end. So let's say you were asked the following question. You were given coins of different denominations and a total amount of money. Write a function to compute the number of combinations that make up that amount. You'll be given two parameters as well an amount and an array of coins. In this example, we have an amount of five and the coins one, two, five. Now, if we were to compute the different combinations by hand, we would get a single five cent coin, two plus two plus one, two plus one plus one plus one, and one plus one plus one plus one plus one. This would give us an output of four because there's four different combinations. This is exactly what the question was asking. But how would we do this in code? We could use something called dynamic programming. A simple way to think of dynamic programming is the process of solving easier to solve subproblems and building the answer up from that. So what does that mean? Let's say someone asks, what is two to the thousand? If you tried to do two times two times two times two, etc., it would take some time to compute. But let's say they also give you the state of the subproblem 2 to the 999th. Well, instead of computing everything up to this point, all you must do is multiply two times that subproblem with state. You're using the solution to the subproblem 2 to the 999th to find your answer. We can do the same thing with this coin question. So let's look at this example. You were given the amount 12 and again the coins 1, 2, and 5. The first thing we're going to do is create a one-dimensional array the size of amount plus one. We call this array combinations. We can do this because the value stored in the array will be the total count of combinations for the different amounts. Each location in the array will correlate to an amount of money. So the location six in the array will correlate to the money amount of six. We're going to iterate through this entire array for each coin given as a parameter. The logic we use to fill this array during each iteration goes as follows. If the amount is greater than or equal to the coin value, then the amount location in the combinations array will result in its current value plus the value in the location amount minus coin. This may sound tricky, but it's really quite simple. Let's go through this example to help you better understand the logic. We begin by iterating through the entire array with coin 1. The first thing we need to do is set up amount 0 with the value 1. This will never change because a coin can never go into 0. I'll explain in a second why we give it that value. Now we can look at amount 1 and go through the logic. 1 is equal to coin 1, so we go through, which means there must be a combination. We do amount 1 minus coin 1, which leaves us with 0. We look at amount 0 to find the value 1 inside. This confirms a combination, and this is why we created amount 0 with the value 1. We can now give amount 1 the value 1, signifying a single combination. So let's move on to amount 2. 2 is greater than 1, so we move on. The amount 2 minus coin 1 gives us 1. We look in the combinations array for amount 1 and add it to amount 2's current value, which is 0. Now amount 2 has one combination. The same thing happens with 3. 3 is greater than 1, and 3 minus 1 equals 2. We take the value in 2 and add it to 3, which is currently 0. Now 3 has one combination. We can do this for the rest of the array, and we get one combination in each. This makes sense because 1 goes into every amount. Since we are done with coin 1, we can now move on to coin 2. So now we start back at amount 1. Is amount 1 greater than or equal to 2? No, it isn't. So we skip amount 1 and move on to amount 2. 2 is equal to coin 2. So we do the same thing we have been doing. 2 minus 2 gives us 0. We look at amount 0 and add its value of 1 to the current value 1. This will give amount 2 two combinations. Let's look at 3. 3 is greater than 2, so we do 3 minus 2, which equals 1. We take the value from 1 and add it to amount 3. This gives us two combinations. Now let's do four. Four is greater than two, so four minus two equals two. We check amount two, 
and we added two combinations to the value of amount 4. This gives us three total combinations. If this is confusing for you, think of it like this. There are two ways to create amount 2 that we've already found. We are just adding another coin 2 to both those combinations to create 4. Then we have the 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 from the first coin iteration, giving us 3 total. Now we can do this for the rest of the array. And at the end of two full iterations, there are seven total combinations for amount 12. So let's finally look at our last coin 5 and iterate it through the array. Since coin 5 is greater than the amounts 1, 2, 3, and 4, we can skip them. Let's look at amount 5. 5 is equal to 5, so we do 5 minus 5, which equals 0. We take the value at amount 5 and add 1 to it. This will give four total combinations. We do the same thing with amount 6. 6 minus 5 equals 1. We take the value in amount 6 and add 1 to it. This gives us a total of 5 combinations. So hopefully by now you get this process. We can do this for the rest of the array to get our final results. You can see that there's a total of 13 combinations for amount 12, and we can give this as our final output. If you were also asked to find the total combinations of any number in the array, all you'd have to do is grab it from its location. So since we've gone through all that, let's write some Java code to implement this algorithm. So let's get started here. I already have this change method started. It has the input of amount and the array of coins. We are inputting 12 and then the coins 1, 2, 5, just like the example. And then I have this helper method created that's going to print out the amount for us. So let's start with the int array called combinations, new int. We're going to make it size amount plus 1. Then we're going to do combinations 0, oops, 0 equal to 1. All right, so now we need to iterate through the, all of these coins. So we can do a for each. We're going to have an int coin through coins. So this is just going to go through each coin and select it as a coin. Now we need to go through this actual combinations array. So we're going to do int i equal to 1. So we're going to start at 1. Remember, we're not actually going to hit this. We're going to start at 1 and iterate through it from there. So we're going to do is i is less than combinations.length i++. plus plus. So pretty simple, we're just iterating through the combinations array, but we're gonna start at one. So we're gonna do if i is great, oops, greater than or equal to coin, we'll do combinations i is plus equal to combination i minus coin. So that's all you have to do. Well, you we also have to change this to combinations amount to get the 12th spot in the array. So now it's going to go through each coin, then it's going to go through the entire combinations array. It's going to say, if that location is greater than or equal to coin, we're going to subtract it and then place it in that position. So let's run it. And we get 13, just what we wanted. But if you want to see a little bit more what's going on, let's put this print array right here. So we're going to put combinations in there. And I'll do a system.out.println to make it a little cleaner. So let's run that. And this is just going to print out every step of the, the uh, process. So it's going to start at 1. It's going to go through. We're going to go here, look back, look back, just like I showed you before. Then we're going to start at coin 2. Coin 2 is bigger than this, so it's never going to change here. And it's going to go through all the way to 7, just like we had. Then for coin 5, it's going to go through. It's too big for these, so these are never going to change. It's going to go through, and finally we hit the result of 13, just what we wanted. So if you also wanted to say you wanted coin um, 6, you could run that, and you'll get the answer 5, so right here. So you can put anything in here as long as it's less than the amount. So there you have it. That's all you needed to do for this interview question. 
Uh, in the comments, let me know how I did. Let me know if there's anything you want me to do better. If there's any questions you want me to answer, let me know. Subscribe and appreciate it.